deadly mistakes to avoid when you're doing eBay shipping. Now, these mistakes, you want to stay away from them because it is going to cripple your store and it could even cause you to lose your account. The first thing we're going to talk about is making sure that you print out your labels separate. Now, if you're someone who sells on multiple platforms, like you sell on eBay, Amazon, Mercari, you sell a Poshmark, you, you know, you want to make sure that if you are shipping stuff out for Amazon, go on Amazon platform and just ship everything for Amazon pay, uh, customers and then put that aside. Go to eBay for eBay and then the, for whatever other platform you sell on. The reason why you want to avoid that because if a customer had bought something from Amazon and you have one for eBay, now you gave the eBay merchandise to Amazon customer and the Amazon customer has the eBay merchandise. Let's just say your profits in total was over $100. You lost $100 and plus some change because what's going to happen is you really can't count on these buyers to give your item back because you know what, guys? They don't have to, right? Because the thing is, they didn't make the mistake. You made the mistake. I mean, you could send them an email, but half the time, you could send them multiple emails and they don't respond. I remember um, about two years ago, I had made a mistake when I just did what I just told you guys. I sent uh, the wrong order um, transact to the wrong customer. So I did Amazon customer. It should have been an eBay customer. Now, this item, guys, it was like a computer software CD. I think it was like worth like $40. So I told the person what I did, if they could please send it back, you know, and I'll pay them to ship it. Never responded to the point that like almost like 10 months after the fact that this had happened, I'm not even exaggerated. Okay, well, maybe it could have been like 10 days. I don't know. But for me, it felt like it was forever. Okay, because I'm like, oh, I lost the item. But anyways, besides that point, they had set this back so long. At first, I was actually afraid to open the package. I'm like, why am I getting a return item for something I had sent out? And I had to think for a second. I remember that I made a mistake. That's how long, okay, that this person had set this. I even forgot about it. So I did get the CD back. I was able to resell it for a lower price, so I did thank that person for doing that. But half the time, you're not going to get the items back because they don't have to send it to you, right? And, and that's why you want to avoid that first mistake is not switching the labels because that mistake is going to be a deadly mistake and it's going to cost you money. Now, you might have some, some buyers who actually do feel bad and they know that you know this is your job this is how you make your income they might send it back to you right away but you might have other people who might want to say well they made a mistake it's their fault so i'm not going to send it so and i don't really know how ebay or amazon will help you get the item back uh, because you know it, it, it's a hard hard spot that you want to avoid from what i could say is take your time if you have 10 ebay um, sales, print out all 10 eBay sales and do them one at a time and check off what you sell and then go back and double check to make sure that this customer matches with this transaction. That way you don't make a mistake. Okay, that way it avoids it. Deadly mistake number two, want to make sure you have global shipping checked off. Now, if you are a store owner, this is going to be crucial for you. You really want to make sure you have this. Now, if you're an individual eBay seller, and I don't really, at this point of time, at the, you know, in 2019, it's really not to your advantage to be just to sell stuff on eBay. You want to be a store owner on eBay. The reason why you want to be a store owner because there's more advantages and more discounts you get with shipping and things like that. So you want to make sure you do that. Um, open up a store to get, you know, discount on shipping when you are a eBay store owner. Not checking off the global um, shipping. So basically what that is, it's international shipping. So it covers shipping to anywhere around the world and basically the customer will pay a fat like a flat rate with whatever country they are they'll pay that when you don't fill that out you have to pay whatever it's going to cost to ship there and let me tell you what now what prices are at 
UPS store, you're looking at easy, or mostly, probably the cheapest, at least, at least $60 for whatever you're going to ship out. And we don't, you know, and if it's an item, like a light top or something, it might cost you a few bucks. But if it's like a heavy item, you're going to pay a lot of money for it. And then you have to fill out a form at the post office. So it's going to cost you money and time. Now, when you do the global shipping, you don't have to worry about that. Depending on where you are in the country, um, eBay has huge international, um, like, um, basically like, like a mailing place, like a factory. So basically, I live in Massachusetts, so anytime I ship anything international, it always goes to Kansas for some reason. That's where it goes. It doesn't go anywhere. It's some factory that just goes to Kansas. It gets there, and then they take care of it. They, they send out overseas. You, you definitely could track it but it's not going to give you a lot of track it'll just say in process and when the customer gets it that's when it says it's arrived so doing the global shipping is going to save you money whatever item i sell um and i always pay like eight dollars for it which is the most i pay which is i rather pay eight bucks than pay sixty dollars right so that's deadly mistake number two so we talked about two deadly mistakes the first one we talked about was miss printing labels for different customers. The second one we talk about was making sure we are covered with global shipping because not being covered global shipping will cost you money and it'll cost you time. Deadly mistake number three, and you, this one is very hard and this is what breaks top rated sellers with mediocre sellers or sellers who really can't make it to that level. Pricing your items. If you price your items too high and you have a store, so let's say the cheapest store is 20 bucks a month, right? And every item you have in your store is like 30, 40, 60, 80, not like the highest item you have in your every like the lowest item you have in your store is like $40. Everything else is 40 and up. You're probably not gonna make a lot of money. But it really depends on what you have. So you don't want to price your items too high. Pricing your items too high is a deadly mistake because the reason why it's a deadly mistake, you have to, you have monthly fees to pay with eBay. And if the money's not coming in, you're basically just taking your hard-earned cash and just sending eBay a check. So you're paying eBay. Instead of eBay paying you, you're paying them. So you really want to think about how you price your items. How I price my items, if I have a top, it's not a high brand top. I'll price it like eight dollars, right? And then I put four seventy-five for shipping. That's just the flat rate I use. That way, you get some money with the shipping, and then whatever money's left over, you'll get that, and that could easily give you with like around ten dollars. That's how I do my 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 sales and stuff. Try to give your customers a good deal. I know we're all in it to make money, but at the same time, you want your customers to keep coming. If people are coming to your store and your items are really expensive, and then they set you like a best offer, you don't take it, you might not make any money. You know what I mean? And it really depends on what items you have. So that's a deadly mistake. Sometimes, a lot of people have the misconception, like if they buy only designer items, they're gonna make millions of dollars. And that's not always true. Half, it, you really, with eBay, you really don't know what's going to sell. You could, you know, this is just an example. You could get like, a Louis Vuitton bag for one of your girlfriends and you're like oh I'm gonna sell this bag in two weeks that bag could sit there for 10 months because guess what everybody else probably has that same bag and then you probably have a TJ Maxx purse that you probably bought for like eight bucks and you think it's not really worth anything you put it in for 20 bucks you sold that quicker than you sold your Louis Vuitton bag you don't know it's really like gambling on eBay, you know, you, you put something up, you don't know. So you want to avoid deadly mistake number three, don't price your items too high. Make sure you price your items correctly um, and be careful about giving free shipping because some items you don't want to do free shipping, some items you want to do, you really have to like work it out and see what's going to be best advantage for you. Deadly mistake number four. Mistake number four is basically UPS gives you like free boxes and packages. Now, you got to be careful. A lot of times you can save money with your own poly bags. Now, if you use their bubbler bags, it's easily like a flat rate 735. And 
if you, you know, are an eBay seller at home, you probably could save like a few cents, but they're still going to charge you more than if you had a poly bag. That's definitely mistake number four. You really want to make sure... I honestly would only use a UPS box is if I have heavy items, like a, a heavy purse, or if I'm selling like breakable items, or if I'm doing a lot, I'm going to use their box. I'm going to pack it up, and it's going to be a flat rate. It's going to actually cost me less than if I was to get my own box, because my own box is going to cost more money. Deadly mistake number five. Now, this one is a big one. And actually, not only could your store get closed, you could actually get arrested. You got to be careful with this one. This deadly mistake number five is charging your customers more for shipping when they should not. And then basically what you do is you like, for example, if you have like a top, right? And now we all know, like, let's take this top I'm wearing right here. Easily is two ounce. Okay. Now, with UPS online, it's pretty smart. Like, whether it's one ounce, two ounce, it's going to be $275. Now, let's say, example, that this top was seven ounces, and I put it for two ounce. It charged my customer, like, $9 for shipping. But when I went to the UPS store, I only paid $2, and I kept the rest of the money. Your customer is going to see first class you know, region A, depending on where they live, two seventy five. Not only is your customer going to be annoyed, they could even report you to the um, UPS Federal. You got to be very careful with that because that's called stealing, right? You can't do that. So that's why you have to have a scale. Now, you can make a mistake, and some people honestly make mistakes they don't know, but I'm not going to mention names, but I've seen videos where they have been people who are caught doing this. And what these buyers do is they expose these people on social media, they expose them on YouTube, and that is pretty bad. You know, you want to make sure you avoid that deadly mistake. Deadly mistake five is charging your customers more for shipping than what they should be paying for. Stay away from that. Now, if you do it at home, you know, it doesn't print out what they pay, but you got to be careful because even when you bring it to the store, they still weigh the item. So if it's like, you know, if it's like a few ounces, I don't think the UPS store is like, you know, they're going to tell you, oh, but for example, if something weighs like seven pounds and you print out a receipt for two ounces, they're going to question that. And they might even tell you that you cannot ship anything for it because now you basically you know, they don't trust you anymore. So you got to be careful about that. So those are the five deadly mistakes. And we could go back over them again. The first one was be careful about not misprinting out different labels. The second one was you want to protect yourself for global shipping, right? The third one was pricing your items at a reasonable price that your customers want to buy from. Now, you don't want to price too high, but you don't want to price too low at the same time. The fourth one we talked about, oh, now I'm trying to remember, uh, what did I say for the fourth one? I think the fourth one we talked about, let me talk about the fourth one. Oh, yes, the UPS boxes. See how I forgot easily? So we talked about um, using a poly bag, versus using your old poly bag versus using a uh, UPS, like post office poly bag or boxes. It really depends on the item. And then the last thing we talk about is measuring your, weighing your items, like this, the top that I have on, to the accurate price to charge your customers what the item's for. Okay, now, sometimes you make a few change off of the item, but if, you know, for tops, your customer is probably going to pay anywhere from $275 to $365. Don't charge them $9 for a blouse when you know it's one ounce. Don't do And honestly, I don't think someone's going to pay $9 for a blouse for shipping. Because when I shop online on any other store, I'm looking for free shipping. And I will pay $7 or $8 for an item, depending if I need it. But... 
I'm not paying eight dollars for a blouse. That's I'm telling you that right now. I'm not doing that, right? So that's so. Think about how your customer would think. So guys, I really hope these these topics, you know, these type of informative videos help you guys because these mistakes I've made them. We all made these mistakes. Um, 